Hello, and our next chapter in this somewhat novel novel is called Araby. And right away we're reminded that Arabia, to get to Arabia from Dublin, you have to travel east. And there's that theme again, everything in this book that is in the east is or seems better. And we've got a young boy, we will now put him at late middle school, early high school age, and he's about to go through his next rite of passage, which is his first, quote, love. He's in a house of his uncle and his aunt, and he's looking down North Richmond Street, which is blind, which brings us to love is blind sometimes. It's a quiet street. And the other houses gaze at one another with brown, imperturbable faces. That is, they can't be bothered, they don't get upset. But brown is also the color the girl will be wearing when he sees her. The former tenant of our house, a priest, had died in the back drawing room. We are reminded in the previous chapter, a priest died in somebody's living room, drawing room. And in that room, there was waste behind the kitchen littered with old, useless papers. We're reminded that the chalice was useless. This paper is useless. And that when we moved into the house, there was a wild garden behind the house that contained a central apple tree. Well, anytime we run into a garden lit in world literature with an apple tree in it, we've got a major symbol, the Garden of Eden and the Tree of Knowledge and our boy, young boy, is about to get some knowledge. He's about to figure something out. Of course, the garden is defunct. It's not functioning. The priest's chalice in the coffin was useless. The paper is useless. A lot of themes keep coming through in these works. Now, there's a reason why prom is in the spring and Jesus Christ is resurrected in the spring and a lot of people want to be a June bride. Spring is the season of romance. This boy's time is the short days of winter and dusk. Well, we know winter by now is the death season, and dusk is the dying part of day. Where he, his love affair is not off to a good start. Now, usually if you want to date somebody or get interested in her or him, you know his or her name. Well, this boy doesn't know the girl's name. To him, she's just Mangan's sister. And he's watching for her out the blinds of the house he lives in or the flat that he lives in with his aunt and uncle. And now we get a red flag. Because what he notices about her is that she's waiting for us, her figure defined by the light from the half-open door. He's got a physical attraction to her. Okay, that's okay. That might be how things start. But what about the person? And he doesn't know too much about the person. But the first thing he notices about her is her figure. Her dress swung as she moved, her body and the soft rope of her hair tossed from side to side. So yeah, it, it's a physical attraction he's got. And that's maybe how things start. He lays on the floor in the front parlor watching her come out the door. There's a blind on the window. Again, love is blind. And again, when she came out on the doorstep, my heart leaped. I kept her brown figure always in my eye. So again, he's enthralled by her figure, but he doesn't even know her name or anything about her. At this point, her name was like a summons to my foolish blood. He's already admitting that he's foolish and he knows it. But now his image, her image, starts to accompany him to everywhere that's hostile to romance. And remember, winter is hostile to romance. Dusk is hostile to romance. And he carries her image and her name like a chalice. So he's putting this on a spiritual level. Again, the priest lay in the coffin with a useless chalice. Maybe this kid's so-called love is useless. It, I did not know whether I would ever speak to her or not. I could tell her of my confused adoration. Our kid is confused. He's about to get unconfused pretty soon. But her, the, my body was like a harp and her words and gestures are like fingers running upon the wires. He, he feels like she's playing him like a musical instrument. He's so taken with his feeling. 
he thinks he's about to slip from his senses and he puts his hands together with his palms and he's almost praying he's saying oh love oh love okay but he's not praying to god he's praying to love i guess at last she spoke to me i was so confused i didn't know what to answer again we got the paralysis thing he's like tongue-tied deer in the headlights doesn't know what to say to her his language is paralyzed she asked me, was I going to Araby? I forgot whether I answered yes or no. It would be a splendid bazaar, she said. She would love to go. And why can't you? Okay, so this is this is a, an asking for the first date. But he gets a surprise again. Well, remember where they're standing. He's on the sidewalk. She's a couple steps up on the steps up into her home. Symbolically, she's above him. And spiritually, she's above him because instead of going to Araby, she's going to a retreat at a convent. Now, this might mean that she's considering being a sister and not marrying and devoting her life to God. It might not just mean she's going to retreat, but either way, when he's going to a, some kind of bazaar or festival, she's going to something religious. So she's ahead of him in spirituality. But he watches her and it fell over one side of her dress and caught the white border of her petticoat. Petticoat is an underskirt. He's getting a little sensual here in his attraction to her. What innumerable follies laid waste to my waking and sleeping. He, he is he's chafing against the work of school. His schoolwork is not interesting him. And there's this Eastern enchantment that takes him over. Again, everything that in the, is in the East is better than what's in Dublin. His teachers are getting a little stern with him. He's not paying attention like he used to. His attitude about his schoolwork is it's not very serious anymore. So Saturday arrives. It's the day of going to the Araby Bazaar. He reminds his uncle he wants to go, but his uncle's a little short with him. Now he's really interested in what the boy wants to do because the, the uncle has to give him money so he can get on the train to get to the bazaar. So he leaves the house in a bad mood. The air is raw. His heart is filled with misgivings. He doesn't, he's doubting what he's about to do. Again, it's not a romantic atmosphere and he's, he's doubting what he's about to do. What he said to her when she said she wouldn't go to the bazaar was, well, I'll go to the bazaar and I'll bring you something. Okay, I guess that's the best he, he's gonna get. The evening's starting to approach now. I looked over at the dark house where she lived. I may have stood there for an hour seeing nothing but the brown-clad figure cast by my imagination. He can still see her figure in his mind. He's impatient and he's restless. He's walking up and down the room, waiting for his uncle to get back. And finally, his uncle does get back. And it turns out the uncle is in the pub. He was drinking. And in his dinner, the boy shyly asks him, do you have the money so I can go to the bazaar? And the uncle goes, oh, my God, I forgot. So the aunt says, can't you give him the money and let him go? You've kept him late enough as it is. So the uncle apologizes. He's sorry he had forgotten. Says all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Remember in the previous story, chapter, the uncle said, education is fine, but exercise is better. All work and no play. Asks the boy if he knows a story called the Arabs farewell to his steed. Again, Arabia is east from Dublin. And our, our boy is about to say goodbye, farewell to something. He gets on the third train. He gets in the third class, not the first class carriage on the train over to the bazaar. The carriage is empty. Still no romantic atmosphere here. And finally he gets to where the hall where Araby, the bazaar is happening. And he goes through the expensive entrance, not the cheaper one, but almost all the stalls are closed. Most of the hall is in darkness. He's arrived late. And he says it's the silence like that which pervades a church after a service. Again, there's the spiritual versus the physical thing. He goes by two men counting money. Materialism, not spirituality. That's what this, era, this bazaar is about. Walks past a woman talking to two men. And the woman is laughing. And then she says, oh, there's a fib. Well, what's a fib? Well, a fib is a lie. 
And our boy is about to discover that his feelings for this girl that he thinks are love are a lie. They're not really true. There's a young woman at a stall and he lingers there, but he knows his stay there is useless. And one end of the gallery, there's a call, the light is out, and then the boy is in complete darkness. And we know the metaphor being in the dark. How much do you know when you're in the dark? Well, you don't know much. Our boy does not know much either. He's in the dark about what he really feels. Last sentence in this story, gazing up into the darkness, I saw myself as a creature driven by vanity. My eyes burned with anguish and anger. His love has failed. Why has it failed? It's failed because it's a physical, sensual love. It's vain. And so he feels ang angry and he feels anguished. Remember, he doesn't know anything about the girl. He just knows her name. She's Mangan's sister. That's it. And this is what he's discovered. This is what his knowledge is from the Tree of Knowledge.